If you click this video, I'm guessing you're stuck in learning mode and not getting any closer to being a real backend engineer. Maybe you're stuck in tutorial hell, watching course after course, but not actually building anything. Or maybe you're drowning in documentation. AWS has thousands of pages and Kubernetes may seem impossible. You tell yourself, once I understand Docker or once I master database design, then I'll finally feel ready. But that feeling you have that I'm not feeling ready yet, that is the problem. I spent two years trying to learn everything before I felt ready to call myself a backend engineer. And you know what happened? I wasted two years because the waiting was the mistake. Today, I'm gonna share three realizations that completely changed how I approach learning backend engineering. And I promise you, by the end of this video, you're gonna feel a lot less anxious about everything you think you need to learn. With that, let's get into starting with realization number one, which I'm calling the learning trap that keeps you stuck. When I was starting out, I had this massive list Learn Python, learn SQL, learn APIs, learn Docker, learn Redis, like the list went on and on. And I thought the path was simple. Learn all of this stuff, then start building real things. First the learning, then the doing. That made sense to me. But I really had it like completely backwards. You never finish learning, like ever. There will always be more to learn. New frameworks come out, new tools emerge, best practices start to change. Even senior engineers at Google don't know everything. And once I accepted that, like I truly internalized that I would never know everything, I stopped waiting to be ready. I started building. And ironically, that's when I started learning. Let me tell you about one of the dumbest things I ever did as a developer. I wanted to build a side project, a simple API that would track all my reading habits. Nothing fancy, just something where I'd like share the books I've read and I can rate them. Somewhat like Goodreads, but completely personalized to myself. And you know, I built it so it meant a little bit more. But before I started building, I told myself I needed to be prepared. I needed to learn the right way to do things. So I made a learning plan. I was going to learn Docker properly so I could containerize my app. I was going to study database indexing to make sure my queries were optimized. I was going to understand how to structure in a proper RESTful endpoint. And I was going to learn all about security and authentication. And you know what happened? <laughs> like, I spent a lot of time preparing, reading articles, watching tutorials, taking notes. And I never built the project. Like, not even a single line of code because I was too busy trying to learn everything that I didn't actually need. So here's the thing that nobody tells you when you're starting out, and that's that backend engineering knowledge is infinite, literally like infinite. You can spend your entire life learning and never reach the end of knowing everything about backend engineering. To give you a sense of scale alone, AWS has over 200 services. Each service has hundreds of pages of documentation, and that's only one cloud platform. It's literally impossible to know everything. And on top of this, while you're learning things, new stuff is coming out. The goalposts are constantly moving. Once you accept that you'll never learn everything, you can stop trying to learn everything. You can stop feeling guilty about all the stuff you don't know. You can stop comparing yourself to other people who seem to know everything because they have years of experience on you. And those people that you think know everything, they don't. They just know like different things than you. So here's what I do now. I don't try to learn everything before a project. I choose what problems I want to solve. And then I learn what I need for those specific problems. Like to keep it even more simple, if you want to build a simple CRUD API, you don't need Kubernetes. You don't need Redis. You don't need message queues. You need to understand HTTP, basic database operations, and maybe like one framework like FastAPI. That's it. Want to add a caching layer later on because your app is getting a little bit slow? Cool. Now learn about Redis. But not before. Not just in case. Learn what you need to know to be successful now. Now, this might sound obvious, but think about how you've been approaching learning. Are you trying to learn things just in case? Are you studying technologies you don't actually have an immediate use for? Are you reading about advanced topics because you think you should know them? I see this all the time. Someone wants to build themselves a blog, but they're watching videos about microservices and how to structure their blog and microservices. Why? Because that's how they think real backend engineering is, but it's not. So here's your action step after this section. Pick one project, just one, something you want to build this month. It doesn't have to be impressive. It doesn't have to be like original. It just has to be something you the viewer who <laughs> wants to build, then write it down, then ask, what do you need to do to be successful? And no, AI is not cheating. Ask it questions. That's your learning list. That's it. Everything else is off the table for now. That's how you make 
actual progress in backend engineering. Now, realization number two is the local host lie. Here's something that nobody wants to hear. Your local host project is teaching you almost nothing. <laughs> now, I know that sounds harsh, but think about it. How many projects do you have sitting on your computer right now that just need a few more features or a little bit of refactor here and there before you deploy them? How many times have you told yourself, I will launch it, you know, after I add authentication or once I clean up this code or, you know, once I add tests over here, it, it happens to all of us. So with that, let me tell you another one of my stupidest moments. I guess I'll kind of go with that flow. Um, I was building a task management API. Nothing crazy. Just a backend for tracking to-dos. It probably had tags, due dates, priority levels, all that stuff. I was really proud of it at the time. But I never deployed it because it wasn't ready. I kept adding features. I realized I needed, you know, better search functionality because I had zero users. I then needed to add, you know, file attachments because I wanted to learn about S3 on AWS, which is actually not that bad, but it wasn't needed for my first deployment. This went on for like a long time. And you know what I learned? Everything works on your local host. So like almost nothing about actual systems. Like, sure, I got better at writing Python and I learned some libraries, but the really important stuff, the stuff that actually makes you a backend engineer, I didn't learn any of that. Everything always works on your local host. Later on, I built another project. Now, this one's kind of funny because it was like a little funny little API that texts me every morning, the weather and a joke. <laughs> it took me a weekend to build like in college. The code was ugly. It had bugs. It was probably barely working at the time, but I deployed it. I actually used it. And with one week of using this janky little API in production, I learned more about how to create a real application than that task manager. And that's because production breaks your code and project in ways localhost doesn't. On my computer, this little joking weather API worked fine. But in production, it crashed on the third day when the weather API service was slow to respond. And I, and I had then learn about timeouts and retries. On my computer, that never was a problem. And then in production, I had this like SQLite 3 database. Something to do with the server was like deleting the database every once in a while because I didn't have the file on a disk. See, overall, localhost is safe. Localhost is forgiving. Localhost doesn't teach you real lessons. Production is where the real learning happens. Production is where your assumptions get tested. Production is where you discover what you actually need to know. So here's what I realized. There are two types of problems in the backend engineering world. There are what I'm calling imagination problems, problems you can think of while sitting at your desk. Like what if someone sends an invalid data? What if the database is slow? What if two requests happen at the same time? And then there are reality problems that only really show up in production because you might not be thinking about it while you're building it in your local host. And these are more like problems you literally cannot predict. And you know what? Reality problems are way more valuable to learn from. Yeah, local host will teach you about code and everything that you need to be able to create applications, but production is how you learn about like system design. Like how do you actually create a real working product? You don't need to worry about 1 million users while completely missing obvious reality problems like how, why your API returns a 500 because someone's name has like an apostrophe in it. You might miss that in your imagination. But in reality, you're going to get an error and be like, what the heck? And have to go look into it. So overall, build something that works, ship it, and let reality tell you what actually needs fixing. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but Eric, I can't just ship broken code. What about quality? What about best practices? Now, I'm not saying ship garbage. I'm not saying skip basic error handling. I'm not saying deploy something that you know is broken. I'm saying ship something that works for your core use case, even if it's not perfect, even if it doesn't have all the features, even if the code isn't as clean as you would like. And truly, it doesn't have to be deployed to the world. Deploy it on a local VPS and use it yourself or deploy it on Heroku or Render and use it with just like one of your friends. Just get it off localhost and get it into a real environment where real problems can show up. Now, realization number three is that beyond the mountains are more mountains. Here's something I really wish someone told me when I was starting out. You're not learning to eliminate problems. You're learning to face more interesting problems. I had this idea in my head that there was some kind of like finish line you'd get to cross, some point where I'd be like, I know enough, and then building things would just be easy. Like I was climbing this mountain of knowledge, and once I got to the top, I'd be done climbing, and I could just like coast. <laughs> but that's not how it works. 
It's not how it works at all. So what do I mean by this? When I first started, my problem might have been, how do I make this API return JSON? That was genuinely hard for me at one time. I didn't understand HTTP. I didn't understand what an endpoint was. I didn't understand how routing worked. Getting a simple hello world JSON response felt like a massive achievement. And it was. After about three months of building small projects, that problem was now solved. I could make APIs return JSON. Easy, done, no problem. So did life get easier after that? Did I get to relax? No, because now my problems were just, how do I save this data to a database? How do I handle user authentication? How do I validate input data? There ended up being just harder problems to solve, but also more interesting problems. I was building new features, not just hello world. After six months, these problems became even more trivial. And then I had to learn more about CRUD APIs. I had to handle authentication. I needed to you know, be able to validate the data even quicker. Did life get easier? No, because there were new problems like why is this endpoint slow? How can I cache? How do I handle 1,000 concurrent users? What happens when the database connection fails? Do you see the pattern? I didn't eliminate problems. I just graduated to harder problems. Problems that honestly, like six months earlier, I wouldn't have even understood what I was asking myself. After a year, my problems became even more advanced. Like how do I structure my code base to not make a mess? How do I make the system reliable with external services fail? How do I debug issues that only happen in production? Every stage, I'm solving problems. The problems just never stop. They just get more interesting, more complex, perhaps more rewarding. At each stage, I thought I was struggling more than I should. I thought, why am I still having so many problems? I should be past all this by now. But that feeling never goes away because the nature of learning is you're always at the edge of your capabilities. You're always working on problems that are slightly too hard for you. And that's what learning feels like. So here's what I eventually realized, and that's that this is literally the back-end engineering role. Being a back-end engineer doesn't mean you have you don't have problems anymore. It just means you get to solve engineer-level problems instead of, you know, beginner-level problems. And that's actually way more fun. I like to think about it like this sometimes. When you play a video game, you don't always want all the levels to be easy. That would be boring. You want the levels to get progressively harder as you get better. That's what makes gaming engaging. Same with backend engineering. If you were just solving the same problem, you know, return JSON problems over and over, you'd be bored out of your mind. The fact that the problems get harder is what makes it interesting. So here's like another way to think about it, right? You know how people say beyond the mountains are more mountains. That's literally what this realization is about. That used to sound depressing to me. Like there's no end to the struggle. Like as soon as you get to the mountain, you just see more mountains they have to climb. But I don't see it differently now. Yeah, there's more mountains that you have to climb, but that's exciting because I'm not climbing the same mountain over and over again. Each mountain is different. Each mountain is taller, more interesting, different views. Would you really want to spend your career solving the same basic trivial problems over and over? I want it. I'd be bored. The fact that there's always more mountains to climb means that there's always something new to learn, always a new challenge, always room to grow. That's not a problem. That's the entire point. Now, with that, let me address something important. Some of you might be thinking, but I'm overwhelmed by my current problems. I just possibly couldn't handle harder problems. I get it. I've been there. But when you're stuck on something, it doesn't feel exciting, right? It, it feels frustrating. You're like, you're, you have to almost brute force the learning. However, you're supposed to be at that edge of your ability, right? That's the feeling of this is hard doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It just means you're learning. It just means you're growing. The key is making sure you're working on problems that are just slightly hard, right? Slightly outside of your comfort zone. Not like way too hard, not impossible, just slightly out of reach. That's the sweet spot for learning. The problems never end, and that's not a bad thing. That's the whole point of being an engineer. Thanks for watching. Now go build something and I'll see you in the next video.